This episode brought to you by HelloFresh. Delicious pre-measured ingredients and simple chef-made recipes delivered to your doorstep every week. Also join us this Saturday on Twitch for a live charity stream. September 5th from noon to 10. Hope to see you there. Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic Guy, remember it so you don't have to. Well, with the first Disney live-action remake coming out that people are actually saying, It could work! It only makes sense to look back at, in my opinion, one of the most interesting animated Disney films, Mulan. I say interesting not because I think the film is particularly fascinating, but because of the following it's acquired. Released in 1998, I was still in high school when this film came out, and the reaction people my age or older had was an astounding... That was okay. It's no Lion King, but the characters were decent, the songs were hummable, it's a totally serviceable flick. But the reactions from kids were quite different. Children loved this movie, and more importantly, it stayed with them. To a point where now those children are grown up, they're showing it to their kids, and they're having the exact same reaction. This has resulted in memes, fan art, merchandise. Don't even get me started on this shit. And once again, a very hyped up remake. The closest Disney comparison I could think of for this would be a Goofy movie. It's nothing epic, but it struck a chord, spoke a language that connected with a generation that loves to quote the lines and celebrate the film. Mulan has an even bigger advantage as it was a bigger hit than a Goofy movie. Not Frozen levels per se, but it turned in a decent payday. So why has this film grown such a unique but large fan base over the years, and why is it still going strong? What did people like me who saw the film as passable, but nothing special, miss that younger crowds gravitated towards? Well, let's get down to business and take a look at Mulan! Hey, Minnie, you're humming that song in your head right now. The film opens with an attack on the Great Wall by the Huns, and the Emperor of China, played by Pat Morita, says they must recruit more soldiers to defeat them. A single grain of rice can tip the scale. One man or woman, or woman may be the difference between victory and defeat. This brings us to Mulan, voiced by Ming-Na Wen, making cheat notes for impressing the matchmaker. We are counting on you to up uphold the family honor. Don't worry, father. I won't let you down. Oh, if only I knew Chinese instead of English. Meanwhile, Mulan's mother and grandmother. Wait, both parents are alive in this Disney film? Oh, <gasps> make a wish! My 10-inch penis, my wish came true! Try to help Mulan out by getting her dressed up and even giving her a lucky cricket. This leads to the song you'll bring honor to us all. By striking a good match, huh? as oh. this could be the day. Hey, hey, very nice! Executor for touching a man's things. <laughs> Just my recipe for instant bride. The song is a catchy tune, cleverly pointing out the ironies of enforcing gender roles. Ironically used in ads, enforcing gender roles. Mulan's meeting the matchmaker. Everything must be perfect. But isn't this what she doesn't want to be in the movie? I said make her perfect! Fa Mulan. Damn, I thought only Eddie Murphy would be using that language. Present. Oh. I really am too old for some of this. You must demonstrate a sense of dignity. As you'd imagine, clumsy 90s rom-com Mulan accidentally messes things up, resulting in some wacky slapstick. It's pretty standard, though I will admit, this did get a laugh. <laughs> Damn it, I picked the extra flammable fan! You may look like a bride, but you will never bring your family honor! Why is it when that makeup is supposed to look funny on her, it looks scary? But when it's supposed to look scary on Ronan, it looks funny. Mulan goes home disgraced and sings Reflection, sung by Leia Salonga. Can it be I'm not meant to play this part? I'll admit I was shocked to rediscover how surprisingly short this song is. Where most emotional Disney ballads usually run between two and a half to three minutes, Reflection is only a minute and a half long. That's not a ton of time to get an emotional impact. 
But even with that said, the song might actually be more poignant now than it was before. See, back then a lot of people saw this as just another wanting more song, which had become a little stock by that point. But when you really take in the lyrics of your reflection not representing who you are, and the increased awareness and identity around gender, sexuality, and online personas, it surprisingly grows in relevance. I get the feeling this song might actually make a stronger connection now with some people than it did when it first came out. In fact, I do have to admit a lot of these songs are better than I remember them. I think I was always comparing them to knockouts like Part of Your World and Bell, but these really do hold their own years later. I was impressed how much I liked them looking back. My, my. What beautiful blossoms we have this year. Her father gives a nice talk about, well, they're surrounded by flowers, so of course, late bloomers. This one's late. But I'll bet that when it blooms, it will be the most beautiful of all. And it might pretend to have a penis. That's very important. They're given the news that a male from every household must serve in the army to defeat the Huns. Naturally, Mulan's father is too old to serve, but it's not looking like they have any other choice. You'll die for honor. I will die doing what's right. But if you- I know my place. It is time you learned yours. As well as what it's worth. Thirty dollars is pretty steep, man. Mulan says screw this no girl's treehouse shit and disguises herself as a boy to join the army in her father's place. She could be killed. If I reveal her, she will be. They will murder her if they discover. She's not technically a Disney princess. Shh, don't say that so loud! Mulan's ancestors, led by the voice of George Takei, have a meeting to discuss what is to be done. Which of course leads to the introduction of our comic relief, Mushu, played by Eddie Murphy. Anybody who's foolish enough to threaten our family, vengeance will be mine! <laughs> So, from what I can gather, people are kind of split on this character. I don't know anyone who hates him like Jar Jar, but I don't know anyone who loves him like Genie either. He seems remarkably out of place. But to the film's credit, I think that's part of the comedy. He's animated well. I want to laugh at him. I just don't think he's given a ton of funny things to say. Watch this here! <gasps> ah! Jump back, I'm pretty hot, huh? Well, maybe I had to send nobody that proved no point. In something like Shrek, he can get a little bit more risque, which I think plays more to Murphy's strengths. I say we take the sword and neuter him right here. Give him the Bob Baca treatment. This, I see as donkey light. It's familiar enough, but Jesus, I miss the stuff that's bad for you. But to be fair, he does get a chuckle here and there, though. Like I have to admit, I never really thought about the fact that he's responsible for a man's death. Your misguidance led Fartane to disaster. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Not even sure how that happened. I was cat-sitting! In fact, he's ordered to wake up another guardian to look after Mulan, but he accidentally destroys the statue and uses its decapitated head to fool the others. Meaning that's two murders he's technically responsible for! Where do ghosts go when they die anyway? I make Mulan a war hero and they'll be begging me to come back to work! He and the cricket go after Mulan and we're introduced to the leader of the Huns, Shan Yu. Voiced by Miguel Ferrer. Nice work, gentlemen. You found the Hun army. I know this is an unpopular opinion, but this is one of the most boring Disney villains to me. He looks cool, he's voiced by a good actor, but for a studio that brought us some of the greatest villains of all time, he does and says the most generic bad guy stuff. By building his wall, he challenged my strength. Well, I'm here to play his game. I'm ready. Game, strength, challenge, ready. All his lines sound like evil Nike posters. I think of the manipulation, the backstabbing, the diabolical plans that made me hate the other baddies with such delight. All he does is say kill people and his army kills people. Tell your emperor to send his strongest armies. Part of that might be he's not on screen very long. Had they shown him, say, planning his strategy or explaining why he's fighting or showing more of his abuse of power over his prisoners or hell, even his soldiers, I'd totally be on board. But all of that, I guess, is done off screen. There's a scene where he finds a doll and says he best return it to its owner, and then later you see a village burn down. That's like Frollo saying find the gypsy girl and then you just cut to Paris on fire. It's not nearly the same. Yeah, he does bad stuff. I mean, that's a whole village of families burned to the ground, but it's like a documentary on a serial killer saying what he did, not how or why he did it. Oh wait, right, he was enticed. Guess that's all we need. The emperor 
will stop you. He invited me. If you like this dude, cool, but he doesn't do anything for me. I think the only intimidating moment I got out of him was this scene. How many men does it take to deliver a message? One. You missed. Missed again, there you go. Meanwhile, Mulan practices acting like a dude. Ha, huh, I see you have a sword. I have one too. They're very manly and tough. I'd laugh, but I've heard LARPers say that word for word. Mushu approaches and lets her know he's there to help her out. My ancestor sent a little lizard to help me? Drag gun, not lizard. I don't do that tongue thing. Hey, don't rule that out, man. A lot of lady dragons like that stuff. Is he their son? If I was my real size, your cow here would die of fright. For instance, my eyes can see straight through your armor. Oh! Rated G. Dishonor on your whole family! Dishonor on you! Dishonor on your cow! Dis Stop! But there's so much merchandise to be utilized from this. Why, hello, Fresh. I see you've come to play our server part game of two person telephone. <laughs> How dare you use that language? But yes, you can start. <laughs> Give fresh, pre measured ingredients and mouth watering seasonal recipes delivered right to your door with HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. <laughs> HelloFresh lets you skip those trips to the grocery store and makes home cooking fun, easy, and affordable. HelloFresh's recipes are so delicious. There's something for everyone, including low-calorie, vegetarian, and family-friendly recipes every week. Save time and stress effortlessly. Because you can save up to 28% by using HelloFresh versus your grocery store shopping trips. HelloFresh also helps you eat more sustainably. Because HelloFresh's pre-portioned ingredients means there's less prep for you and less food waste. Hi. HelloFresh is also dedicated to giving back. In fact, HelloFresh has donated over 2.5 million meals to charity in 2019. And this year is stepping up their food donations amid the coronavirus crisis. Hold on, HelloFresh. I have something to say. <laughs> Being a particularly good cook myself, making meals has always been difficult, but not with HelloFresh. Their easy to follow instructions and delicious recipes always make cooking a delight. <laughs> Let me talk! In fact, there's a special deal. Go to HelloFresh.com slash Critic80 and use the code Critic80 to get a total of $80 off, including free shipping off your first box. Additional restrictions apply, please visit HelloFresh.com for more details. This was fun, HelloFresh! I love you. Remember, that's HelloFresh.com slash Critic80 and use the code Critic80 to get a total of $80 off. Like our videos? Subscribe to be notified about them. Want to actually be notified about them? Click on that bell as well. Also, don't forget to check us out on Twitch. Playing some games, telling some jokes, and overall having a good time. Hope to see you there. that this film decided to go with one prominent character for the comic relief is when Mulan walks in to join the army, the laughs happen quite naturally. This is a pretty funny army. There's a short, anger-prone dude played by Harvey Firestein, a lanky show-off played by Getty Wananabe, and a calm giant played by Jerry Tondo. They all get a fair amount of laughs. Even Murphy sneaks in a good chuckle. I am worth my time, chicken boy. Chicken boy! Say that to my face, you limp noodle! Let's see... Nope, went right under the radar. Mulan trying to fit in as a boy is also pretty entertaining. I didn't know Fajou had a son. He doesn't talk about me much. <laughs> I can see why. <laughs> this is good comedic writing. The first third of the movie has a hint of a rushed feel to it with the story, characters, and even length of the songs hitting sort of the bare minimum requirements for a film like this. But I'm starting to think that was done just to reach this part of the movie. Not only is Mulan training and just interacting with the army throughout the majority of the film, but it feels like the movie suddenly turns on when she does. The energy is high, the comedy is tight, the slapstick is well-timed, and Donny Osmond sings a song! 
I can't believe I'm saying that as a positive either. Let's get down to business. To oh. defeat the fun. This is hands down the breakout song of the movie. Where the others get decent hits on YouTube for a Disney musical, averaging 20 mil or so, Make a Man is currently at 122 million. Honestly, I can't say I'm surprised, it's just a fun song. It's catchy as hell, it's orchestrated nice, and it's a training montage, man! You can throw some Rocky clips in there and nobody would have a problem. Must be swept out the coursing river With all the force of the great typhoon I like too that Mulan isn't naturally a fighter. Nothing about her background or environment would indicate that she would be. In fact, if anything, it makes her risk and sacrifice all the more meaningful. She's going into a fight not knowing how to fight. She has to learn like everyone else, which allows growth for the character as well as growth with the army. And once again, it leads to some great laughs. The face that launched a million profile icons. Mysterious as the dark side of the moon. In another very funny scene, Mulan tries bathing in the lake when, of course, some of the other soldiers get the same idea. Leading to probably my favorite line in the entire film. There are a couple of things I know they're bound to notice. I know it's a kid's film, so I won't say what it is, but it rhymes with newbies. And I am Yao, King of the Rock. And that's just what he's called. Mushu bites one of them to get Mulan away, and she overhears Captain Shang, voiced by B.D. Wong, being chewed out by the Emperor's advisor, voiced by James Hong. For what it's worth, I think you're a great captain. That young man fills me with hope, and some other emotions that are weird and deeply confusing me. Mushu dresses up as a messenger, which I'm honestly shocked hasn't become a parade character at Disney, giving orders for the army to head out. This leads to the final song of the film, and probably the weakest, Girl Worth Fighting For. Hey! Think of instead a girl worth fighting for! It's not bad, I guess. It's just between the over-the-top instrumentals and the comedic singing, it can get a tag grading. My family ways and turn of phrase are sure to throw her! Best choice for singers since Return Jafar said, let's not give Gilbert Godfrey one, but two songs. We have missed the most since we went off to war. Hashtag girl power. Girl That's totally a chick, right? Yeah, but it's cool. One of our pickers is actually a dude. Aw, uh, how long did you know? A girl was fighting. Huh. For soldiers, it sure took us a while to notice that. Maybe we shouldn't sing any more horny songs. My father should have been here. Captain! They come across a burnt village as well as a burnt army, with the dead general being Shang's father. Despite the pain, he decides to move the army forward to try and stop the Huns when this occurs. What happened? Uh... You just gave away our position! No, that's a good question. What did happen? Did it go off on its own? Did Mushu trigger it? This leads to a big action sequence, and it's never made clear what sets it off. It doesn't ruin too much, I guess. It's just odd that it's never clarified. I mean... Is Mushu now responsible for two beheadings and an army's demise? He's almost as evil as he was in Mulan 2! Almost. Mulan gets an idea to cause an avalanche with one of the cannons, wiping out the majority of Shen Yu's army. And for a film that visually plays it rather safe, these are some pretty cool shots. That's some Disney fry in the coke logic there. He does get the laughs when it counts. Also, what's his death toll up to now? <laughs> Mulan saves the day, but a battle wound causes her to pass out. The doctor takes a little too good a look. I never thought I'd see the day when I was disappointed to see Bress! The law requires Shang to kill her, but he lets her live for, you know, saving like a bajillion lives. Fair trade? I should never have left home. I usually hate these third act moping scenes where people take something the wrong way and you know the hero's gonna win them over, you just have to slump through it. But Murphy is pretty good at being affectionate here, while also working in a giggle or two. What? What do you mean you're not lucky? And what are you, a sheep? Next you be telling me half the actors in this aren't even Asian. Or that the cast of Aladdin aren't Arabian. Cancel Disney! Yeah, let me, let me know how that goes.
Of course, Shang Yu is still alive, and he gathers what's left of his men to capture the Emperor during a celebration. The Huns are alive! They're in the city! You don't belong here, Milan. Go home. Huh, one day I'm gonna marry that man. Please, you have to help! <laughs> they don't listen to her, ending up in the Emperor being kidnapped. The logical solution? Or, um, a solution? Got an extra dress for me? Yeah, so I get the idea they're switching it up too, like Mulan did, and it's cute, but... I think this is when it hits you, you've been watching a comedy the whole time. It's a comedy with serious moments, but it's a comedy. I would have liked a more serious climax for the Battle of China. You think of Aladdin battling a magic snake, Ariel battling a giant sea witch, Simba battling his uncle. This is a big dude battling a teenager while some guys make kissy faces and drag. Also, a firework is what kills the villain off. After an impression of Batman or Rambo and I don't even know. Who are you? Your worst nightmare. It's... fine, I guess. I mean, those other climaxes have funny moments too, but... Did you think a movie advertised like this? Endangered the lives of thousands of men. And with a poster like this? Was gonna... N like this. <laughs> Can't you at least give me one badass move? Not quite. All right, that was pretty sweet. Mulan saves the day, but you know, tits and all. She's a hero. She's a woman. She'll never be worth anything. Except again, hopefully thirty dollars. Enough. The emperor has some choice words though. You stole your father's armor impersonated a soldier, dishonored the Chinese army, destroyed my palace. But it was damn good flying. You have saved us all. They all bow to her before returning the king made a queue, and she celebrated as a hero. The emperor even does her the favor of playing matchmaker for her. You don't meet a girl like that every dynasty. I'd tap that. She returns home and her father couldn't be more proud. But her grandma's upset she didn't bring home some ass. If you ask me, she should have brought home a man. Excuse me, does Fa Mulan live here? Woo! Sign me up for the next war. I tap that! Would you like to stay for dinner? Mushu is allowed back as a guardian, and a pop song plays us out. Mushu! Whenever you feel your world is crashing down on you. Again, not exactly circle of life or part of your world, but maybe that's not exactly what this was meant to be. I'd be lying if I said I didn't think this was going to be closer to what the live-action film is building up. You know, more epic and serious and really embracing the Chinese culture. You know, without Eddie Murphy jokes. But as I'm learning more and more, I should accept Mulan for what it is and not for what I want it to be. And Mulan, honestly, is a lot of fun. If you accept it more as a comedy adventure, which I think a lot of people do, I think it not only holds up, but the emotional moments hit a little stronger. As a serious film, there wouldn't be nearly enough of the character's struggle or dramatic pacing, but as something a little lighter, you could argue this is just the perfect amount. I'll also give credit that while I never saw the Disney heroines as weak as some others do, I can't really think of one that wielded a weapon before. There is something cool about a Disney princess lineup and one of them is holding a sword. I can see more and more why this film caught on with kids. It has a lot of energy in its animation, songs, and comedy. It doesn't skip over the dramatic moments either, they're just not focused on as much. Even though it was never one of my personal favorites, I will say I do remember a lot of it. Whenever somebody quotes a line, I do always know the context despite not watching it a ton. I think kids and adults over time have really learned to warm up to the charm of it. Whether you're moved by it, empowered by it, or just watch it for some laughs, it doesn't look like this film is going to be dying in popularity anytime soon. I'm a nostalgia critic, I remember it, so you don't have to. Say that to my face, you limp noodle! 
Hey, Doug Walker here doing the charity shout out. Uh, once again, doing a charity tied into uh, battling COVID-19. And this week we are doing Crisis Aid. Uh, this is a charity that has uh, four stars on Charity Navigator. And uh, I'll give you an idea of what they do. The organization uh, assists in sustaining life and collaborates with other relief organizations in bringing necessary food, materials, and medicines to people in times of crisis. <laughs> We're definitely in that now. Uh, particularly uh, life and death situations. You know, very, very much what's happening right now too. Uh, in response to the urgent needs uh, created by COVID-19, Crisis Aid has a local presence through uh, through its Wing of Love and Care program. Uh, this is expanding its current food programs by working alongside local leaders, schools, churches, and senior living communities. Uh, through these strategic partners, Crisis Aid is serving food to those with uh, the greatest need. In East Africa, efforts are underway to provide food and medical assistance to the most vulnerable populations during this time of crisis. Existing programs are being converted to medical clinics in areas with no access to medicines or medical care as well. So as you can see, this is an organization that does so much, and they were doing so much even before uh, COVID-19. I mean, this really is what they specialize in, and they have a great rating, like I said before, on Charity Navigator. So please definitely take a look. It is also one you can volunteer at if you want, uh, you know, if you don't have uh, money to give. But uh, but if you do have money to give, or again, just spreading the word at all, uh, that'd be fantastic, because this is just filled with people doing such good and kind work. So please, check them out, see if you can spread the word, and thank you so much.